in a parallel universe. I don't know if you've ever watched um, The Man in the High Tower. Um, 75 years ago, in the Second World War, Britain was defeated. The RAF lost the Battle of Britain. D-Day was a disaster. Britain was invaded and colonized. The majority fled the country and cannot return. Those who survived moved to the Southampton Portsmouth Strip. Nearly three million people live in what is the world's largest open prison, 25 miles long, five miles wide. The M27 is a militarized separation barrier. The coastline is blockaded. The ports are derelict. No one can leave. There is no escape for us. Imports and exports are heavily restricted. We depend on UN aid to survive. Our democratically elected civil government has been designated a terrorist organization. Three months ago, it got much worse. Armed resistance fighters broke out of our enclave. In retaliation for the last 100 days, Southampton, Fareham, Gosport, Portsmouth have been sieged, invaded, and bombed every day, every night. As a result, as you know, there are tens of thousands dead and wounded. 80% of homes have been destroyed or uninhabitable. The Civic Hall has been demolished. Portsmouth, Solent, and Southampton universities have been flattened. The University Hospital, Royal South Hampshire, and Queen Alexandra Hospital in Portsmouth have been severely damaged and are out of operation. Southampton Airport is unusable. Almost every church, every mosque, every shop, every school, every community center has been demolished and are unusable. Mass burials are taking place on Southampton Common every day. And then, just when we thought it could not get worse, two million people have been forced to move to a so-called safe zone along the western shore, Netley and Royal Victoria Park. We're living there in the open air in makeshift tents. There is little or no food, no water, no sanitation, no electricity. There is a communication blackout. The UN is allowed to bring in only a fraction of the supplies we need. Medical staff are performing operations without anesthetics. There is no sanitation. Communicable diseases are rampant. Diarrhea cases are surging among children. Meningitis, chickenpox, jaundice are reported. And half a million people are literally starving. But we know it's not a parallel universe for the people in Gaza and Palestine. It is infinitely worse than I've described. They are, as we know, experiencing genocide and ethnic cleansing, war crimes on a daily basis. And there is a very real threat of another Nakba with Palestinians expelled into the Egyptian desert. What do Palestinians want? They want to live. They want an end to the genocide. Do they want to return to the status quo before October? No. They want freedom. They want justice. They demand the same rights we enjoy. Liberty, equality, the right to self-determination. And they want an end to Western difference and complicity. And what do Palestinians want of us? I suggest they want 12 things. One, lobby our government to demand an immediate and unconditional ceasefire. Two, demand the UN and humanitarian agencies are allowed unhindered access to provide sufficient supplies of food, water, medical supplies, tents, clothing. 500 lorries a day, not 20, not 30. Three, demand an immediate release for all hostages and all Palestinian prisoners held in detention. Four, demand Israel pays war reparations for every civilian death, every injury, every yes. home, every institution, and every business destroyed. They must pay. Yes. Five, demand support for the South African submission to the International Criminal Court, charging Israel with genocide. Six, 
institute war crimes investigations against Israeli military and political leaders. Seven, bring criminal charges against UK companies supplying Israel with weapons or military equipment used to deny Palestinian rights. Eight, investigate UK citizens who've joined the Israeli military yes. suspected of terrorist offenses. Nine, recognize Palestine on the pre-1960 borders, 67 borders, as an independent, sovereign, contiguous state. Yay. Ten, and if Israel continues to refuse to comply with UN resolutions and international law, institute punitive sanctions until Israel yes. withdraws completely and unconditionally from all territory seized and colonized in 67. And if our government and our opposition refuse to comply with UN resolutions and the findings of the ICJ, remind them that we will remember their complicity when they ask for our votes later this year. 11. Join the BDS movement. It is a non-violent, constructive way to play an active role in the liberation of Palestine from settler colonial military imposed apartheid. It worked in South Africa. It can work again. Boycott Israeli goods. Boycott yes. Western companies profiting from the occupation. It's your money. It's your choice. And finally, join Southampton PSC. Find us on social media. And let me close with a quote from Archbishop Desmond Tutu. He said this, The end of apartheid stands as one of the crowning accomplishments of the last century, but we would not have succeeded without the help of international pressure. If apartheid ended, so can this occupation, but the moral force and the international pressure will have to be just as determined. Thank you.